For this activity, we're going to be taking a look at a primary source, which if you remember is a source created during the time period or by someone who experienced uh, an event. This particular primary source is from Solomon Northup's book, 12 Years a Slave, which he wrote about the time he spent in Louisiana after being kidnapped into slavery. And in this passage, he recounts his experience in the New Orleans slave market. The worksheet that goes along with this reading, um, you can find online, and you need to download that and write in your answers and complete sentences for each question. There's a question that goes along with each slide, and then there's one question at the end that, that is about really the whole passage. Um, if you would want to stop it after each slide and go ahead and answer the question for that slide, that's fine. Or if you want to listen to the whole thing and then come back to each slide, that's fine. However you want to do it is okay. The very amiable, pious-hearted Mr. Theophilus Freeman, partner or consignee of James H. Birch and keeper of the slave pen in New Orleans, was out among his animals early in the morning. With an occasional kick of the older men and women, and many a sharp crack of the whip about the ears of the younger slaves, it was not long before they were all astir and wide awake. Mr. Theophilus Freeman bustled about in a very industrious manner, getting his property ready for the sales room, intending, no doubt, to do that day a rousing business. In the first place, we were required to wash thoroughly and those with beards to shave. We were then furnished with a new suit each, cheap but clean. The men had hat, coat, shirt, pants, and shoes. The women frocks of calico and handkerchiefs to bind about their heads. We were now conducted into a large room in the front part of the building to which the yard was attached in order to be properly trained before the admission of customers. The men were arranged on one side of the room, the women on the other. The tallest was placed at the head of the row, then the next tallest, and so on in the order of their respective heights. Emily was at the foot of the line of women. Freeman charged us to remember our places exhorted us to appear smart and lively, sometimes threatening, and again holding out various inducements. During the day, he exercised us in the art of looking smart and of moving to our places with exact precision. After being fed in the afternoon, we were again paraded and made to dance. Bob, a colored boy, who had some time belonged to Freeman, played on the violin. Standing near him, I made bold to inquire if he could play the Virginia Reel. He answered he could not, and asked me if I could play. Replying in the affirmative, he handed me the violin. I struck up a tune and finished it. Freeman ordered me to continue playing and seemed well pleased, telling Bob that I far excelled him, a remark that seemed to grieve my musical companion very much. Next day, many customers called to examine Freeman's new lot. The latter gentleman was very loquacious, dwelling at much length upon our several good points and qualities. He would make us hold up our heads, walk briskly back and forth while customers would feel of our hands and arms and bodies, 
Turn us about. Ask us what we could do. Make us open our mouths and show our teeth, precisely as a jockey examines a horse when he's about to barter for or purchase. Sometimes a man or woman was taken back to the small house in the yard, stripped and inspected more minutely. Scars upon a slave's back were considered evidence of a rebellious or unruly spirit and hurt his sale. That's the last slide. Go back and pause at each slide if you need to to find good evidence to answer your questions. Make sure you're writing in complete sentences and don't forget to answer the last question which asks broadly about the passage.